in every moment of your waking life, your brain does a spectacular job of binding your senses together to give you a coherent picture of the world. For example, if you're on a hike in Topanga Canyon, your eyes can show you the bright blue sky, your ears can reveal the grass rustling in the wind, your nose can tell you what flowers are in bloom, and depending on how intimate you'd like to get with nature, other senses can also provide information about the surrounding world. Your brain binds all of your senses together to show you this multi-sensory world as one coherent image. Now, as a scientist, I'm interested in one specific question. Can we change the brain's tendency to bind? We know that in typical brains, different senses are processed in different regions of the brain, and in most cases, these regions communicate well to piece it all together. But in certain psychological disorders, like autism and schizophrenia, we see abnormalities in sensory binding. So we need basic science to tell us what the rules are the brain uses to bind and how they can be updated. To explore this experimentally, I simplify the complex sensory world around you in the following way. I sit people in front of a large black piece of cloth, and I ask them to localize briefly presented flashes of light and bursts of sound. Flashes of light are displayed on the screen by a projector. Bursts of sound come from speakers behind the screen, and people scroll with the mouse to tell me where they think things happen. Now, if lights and sounds are played from close together, people will often tell me these things come from one location. But as I play them from farther and farther apart, eventually this breaks down and people will tell me they come from two locations. So using this paradigm, I tried to come up with ways to increase the range over which the brain would bind lights and sounds. In my first experiment, after asking people to localize things to get an idea of the range over which they would bind, I then played lights and sounds from the same time and same place over and over and over again for 10 minutes to teach their brains an association between these two things. When I tested their localizations again, I found that I hadn't changed the tendency to bind, so I went back to the drawing board to try something else. In a second experiment, again after asking people to localize things, I now played sounds and lights at the same time but at different places over and over and over again for just 10 minutes. This, surprisingly, increased their tendency to bind, meaning that now, even when I played lights and sounds from separate locations, people would tell me they were coming from the same place. In a final experiment, I played sounds and lights at different times and different places, and this did not change the tendency to bind. So what we learn after all of this is that to teach the brain to bind more, give it pieces of sensory information it would usually segregate, but teach it a relationship between these two things, that they happen at the same point in time. In psychological disorders where the ability to bind starts to break down, it's these types of experiences that can teach the brain how to bring it all back together. Thanks for listening.